Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Mark with the My Front Range Living Team. Today, we're going to talk about the taxes and tax rates in Colorado Springs, and we're going to get started right now. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Mark with the My Front Range Living Team, powered by Remax Integrity. Uh, we are a, a team of full-time real estate agents here in Colorado Springs, and we have a lot of friends who are looking to move to Colorado Springs. And when they do, one of the questions we almost always get is, what are the tax rates in Colorado Springs? So if you're thinking about moving to Colorado Springs or you're going to buy a home in Colorado Springs, this is a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about our tax rates. So again, like I said, as far as the tax rates, we get that question a lot. And it stands to reason because here as we go through all of these different uh, tax rates and levels and everything else for, from some different states, you're going to see where there's a savings on your monthly mortgage bill. And what does that mean? That means you can buy maybe a little more house with those resources. Because obviously, simple math, a $1,200 savings on your property taxes is gonna equal out to what? Yeah, $100 a month. So you can put that $100 a month toward more house. And that's a big, big deal. So property taxes. In a lot of other states, we understand that they are a flat rate uh, throughout the county or throughout uh, the state. We're a little bit different in Colorado Springs. We don't, you know, we can't give you an exact rate uh, we, because our taxing districts are different. They're based on school districts. They're based on uh, perhaps utility districts. There are special taxing districts, things like that, uh, or, or a particular development. Uh, one of those being uh, Lorison Ranch on the south end of town. That's a special taxing district. So um, we, we get that a lot. So according to some of our research, we have some of the lowest property tax rates in the uh, nation. So the, uh, the national average is 1.07%. Uh, and El Paso County, Colorado Springs uh, proper is 0.48%. So we're just uh, over half uh, less than what the national average is. So again, uh, coming from somewhere else, that's going to impact what you could probably buy or potentially buy here in Colorado Springs. So let's take a look. Um, let's talk about, uh, we're going to go through California, Texas, and Illinois. Some, some of the big ones that we see a lot of our friends uh, moving from uh, those states and coming to Colorado. So California, the average there is 0.74%. So just a little bit higher than Colorado Springs and um, obviously lower than the national average. Texas, Texas's property taxes, uh, they get a, a wrap on a regular basis too about their property taxes, and for good reason, they are over the national average at 1.67. Uh, and for those of you who have followed our channel for a while, you know that I am a native of Illinois. So friends and family back home, get ready for this. Illinois' property taxes are 2.27. That's right, twice the national average. So obviously, you can see that Illinois is driving those up, uh, whereas Colorado and California, oddly enough, is bringing those down. But let's talk about this. So um, income tax. Income tax here in the great state of Colorado is 4.55%. Uh, fairly manageable. Uh, now, Illinois, when it comes to proper or comes to income tax, is at 4.95. Uh, for those of you who are in Texas, you are enjoying a sweet, sweet 0% income tax rate, which of course is in your state's constitution, can't have an income tax. But more on that in just a second. Uh, California's income tax is at 9.3. So obviously we're trading off those property taxes for higher income taxes, but it also stands to reason why a lot of folks are looking at Colorado from California because our property rates are low as well as our income tax rates are lower than California on average. So let's talk uh, just sales tax, just regular old sales tax. And this is where Texas gets a little bit of a bad rap. Here in uh, Colorado Springs, we're at seven and a quarter. Uh, and in Texas, you are at eight and a quarter percent. So um, that's, that, that's pretty substantial. Um, so so there, there, there's a lot of different things that go into uh, moving from one state to another and what's the tax rate and how does it affect you. But the property tax is a big deal, like I said. 
if you're going to save $1,200 uh, over a course of a year, that's $100 a month that you could put towards. And so that's why when we talk about cost of living, it's important to talk about the overall package of that because our cost of housing as it sits comparatively is really, really competitive to some other states by the time you factor in property taxes. So again, when you're thinking about moving to Colorado Springs, it's important reach out to us, let us know where you're thinking about going because our property taxes are going to be based on the school district and different taxing districts and things like that. So it's all over the place and there's not a flat rate. Hey, as always, we hope that you found value in today's video. If you're thinking about moving to Colorado Springs, you can go down in the video description below and click on that relocation guide download. That's yours. Just gives you a little more information about uh, Colorado Springs and the surrounding areas and what part of town might work best for you as you're uh, doing your research. Once again, I am Mark Hubert with the My Front Range Living Team powered by Remax Integrity. Thanks for stopping by. We look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day. Hey, I, and when we talk about moving to Colorado Springs, stick around because I want to talk to you later in the video about a relocation guide, and it'll give you a little more information about what we have to offer here in the Springs and give you a little bit better idea of what areas of town might work for you.